Hello everyone and welcome back. So today we are at our last and final installment of solving interesting previous year questions on direct memory mapping. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. So today we are going to solve this question. This question came in Gate Computer Science 2007 paper. And as I said earlier, looking at this question, this question is indeed a very big one. But that's not a thing to worry. Because in no time, I will prove it to you that it is a very easy question to solve. So let's get to it. Consider a machine with a byte addressable main memory of 2 to the power 16 bytes. Now see, it's already proving my words. Like I said earlier, with a bigger question, the more informations are going to be provided, right? Now, it's already said it's a byte addressable memory and the size of the memory is mentioned in 2 to the power 16. So here itself, we can easily say the PA bits is going to be 16, right? So moving ahead, assume that a direct mapped data cache consisting of 32 lines of 64 bytes each is used in this system. Now see, they're also mentioning about the cache lines. They're not giving us the entire cache size. We don't really need to find out the number of lines in it. It's already provided. And the size of each line or block is 64 bytes. A 50 by 50 two-dimensional array of bytes is stored in the main memory starting from the memory location 1100H. So it's an hexadecimal address you can see. Assume that the data cache is initially empty. The complete array that is this array is accessed twice. So we are going to access this two-dimensional array of 50 cross 50 size twice. Assume that the contents of the data cache do not change in between the two accesses. Therefore, we are going to access this array twice and in between there will be no changes in the array. Now the first question is, how many data cache misses will occur in total? And the second one is, which of the following lines of the data cache will be replaced by the new blocks in accessing the array for the second time? So basically, they are asking us about the number of cache misses first. Then they are asking us about the lines of the data cache which will be replaced during the second access. So let's try to solve it. Now the size of the main memory is given as 2 to the power 16 bytes. Therefore, the number of PA bits is going to be 16. Now it's a direct map data cache having 32 lines and size of each line is 64 bytes. Now we can easily figure out the number of line number bits. Therefore, the number of cache lines is first of all 32. Therefore, line number bits is going to be 5 because 32 is 2 to the power 5 and log base 2, 32 is nothing but 5. Now the block or the line size is mentioned as 64 bytes which is 2 to the power 6 bytes. Therefore, the opposite is 6 bits. So as of now, this is the PA split. From 16 bits physical address, the least significant 6 bits are going to be used for block or line offset. 5 bits are there for the line number and for the remaining, that is the tag, we are going to have 16 minus 5 plus 6 which is 16 minus 11, that is 5 bits. So 5 bits are going to be used for tax. Now we are dealing with a 50 by 50 two dimensional array and this is the conceptual representation of the array itself. Starting from the array element ARR00 up until the array element ARR4949. Therefore, total number of array elements inside that entire array is going to be 50 multiplied by 50 which is 2500. Now it's also mentioned in the question itself that it's a 50 by 52 dimensional array of bytes. That means size of each element is one byte. In that case, let's find out the array size. There are 2500 elements in the array and each of them are of one byte size. Therefore, the entire array size is 2500 bytes. Now the block size is mentioned as 64 bytes. So let's find out the number of main memory blocks needed to store this entire array which is 2500 bytes because that is the size of the entire array itself divided by the block size 64 bytes which results in 39.0625. Now we need not really worry about this critical calculation because during examination we will be provided with the virtual calculator. So this sort of divisions can easily be performed. 
Now we already know the main memory is subdivided into equal sized blocks and whenever we are storing something in the main memory, we can't really use a fraction of it. If we are using a block, we must use it entirely. So in order to store this fraction portion, we will be needing another block. So in total, we actually need 40 blocks. So this is the array and number of blocks needed to store the array is 40 blocks and this is the PS split as of now. Now the array is stored in the main memory starting from the location 1100H. So that's an hexadecimal number. So 1100H in binary is 0001 for the first one, 0001 for the second one and four zeros each for the remaining zeros. Now from these 16 bits, the five most significant bits are for tags, the next five bits are for the line number and the remaining six least significant bits are for the block or line offset. Now converting the line number from binary to decimal, we get the value 4, which means during execution when this array is accessed, the main memory blocks are to be placed inside the cache from the line number 4 onwards. Now we already know 40 blocks are required to store the entire array. Let's name them B0, B1, B2 up until B39. That means 40 blocks. Now as you can see, this is the cache and as mentioned in the question itself, the cache has got 32 lines. So starting from the line number 0 up until the line number 31. Now we know the array is stored in the main memory starting from the memory location 1100H. That means the block 0 is stored in the 1100H memory location. And we also know that during execution when the blocks are accessed, they will be brought to the cache and will be placed starting from the line number 4 onwards. So block number 0 will be placed in the line number 4 and up until the block number 27 will be placed in the line number 31. Now why block number 27? Because 31 minus 4 is nothing but 27. Now from the remaining blocks, the block number 28, 29, 30 and 31 will be placed in the line numbers 0, 1, 2 and 3 respectively. However, from the block number 32 up until the block number 39, we don't really have any other space left in the cache itself. So in order to place them in the cache, we need to replace the remaining blocks and the replacement will continue up until the block number 39 has been placed. Now in case of the first iteration, the number of cache miss is 40 because none of the blocks were present in the cache beforehand. Now the array is supposed to be accessed twice. That means during second iteration starting from the block number 0 up until the block number 39 will again be accessed. And due to the availability of the cache, we will look for the blocks inside the cache first. Now we already know block number 0 is supposed to be placed into the line number 4. But if you observe closely, it's already been occupied by the block number 32. So the block number 32 will be replaced by the block number 0 and this replacement process will continue up until block number 7 because afterwards block number 7 starting from block number 8 up until block number 27 and block number 28 up until block number 31 these are actually considered as cache hits because it's guaranteed in the question itself that the contents of the data cache are not going to change between the two accesses. However, after block number 31, we will need to access block number 32 up until block number 39, but those are not present in the cache itself. Therefore, due to direct mapping concept, the block numbers starting from 32 up until 39 will be placed in the consecutive lines replacing block number 0 to block number 7. So, during second iteration, the number of cache miss is going to be 16 because 8 blocks starting from the block number 0 to block number 7 and another 8 blocks starting from the block number 32 up until the block number 39 will replace one another during the second iteration. Therefore, in total, the number of cache miss is 40 plus 16 that is 56. And during second iteration, the replacement took place starting from the line number 4 up until the line number 11. Therefore, the answer to our first question is option C, that is, in total 56 cache misses will occur. Now coming to the question number 2, the answer is option A, that means from line number 4 to line number 11, the data cache will be replaced by the new blocks while accessing the array the second time. 
So now do you trust me that these are very easy questions to answer? All we need is the clear conception. All right folks, that was all for this session. So far we have solved quite a few important as well as various kind of numerical problems on direct memory mapping. And I think the concept is quite clear to you now. So in the next session, we will see the hardware implementation of direct memory mapping. Hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.